So I'm recording this video immediately after my live stream, which failed by the way. My internet just wasn't up to speed. I'm moving houses and I thought it would be good enough, but it wasn't. And massive stories for both people who were looking forward to live stream, asking questions, contributing, having a laugh, generally hanging out. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through those awesome submissions, those case studies and research efforts and articles people went through and submitted for this specific challenge. The cryptocurrencies, Web3, NFTs, decentralized blockchain based and powered technologies, which are all the hype right now. Everything basically is, you know, decentralized and everything wants to be powered by that. If you have something emerging by definition, it rarely has the UX layer or understanding of how to, let's say, produce better experience for the customer or the user. And what I ask you to do is really flip it around and see exactly what could we do? How might we actually enhance future experience, which is powered by the blockchain or decentralized technology? And I got three very strong cases. People there went in, in such a depth and in such a unique angles so that I think the combination of all three could blow anyone's mind. And I'm really, really happy to present this right now, even if it's not live. If you have any suggestions, if you have any questions for actual offers of these submissions, make sure to leave it down below. So let's jump right into it. And the first case is on Medium, actually. It's an article. And Mayumi submitted this. As you can see, she gave, gives a credit. It's definitely not needed. And what she was looking at, trying to take herself out of a comfort zone and understand more about this space. She didn't know this is a new territory for her, which is exactly why we are doing these type of challenge. She was basically looking into the transactions which are international, which could happen between, let's say, the US and Brazil in her case. And she's saying that a lot of these type of services like PayPal, TransferWise, or WISE as we know it now, Western Union, all are putting big overhead. So what she did is basically went through it and explained exactly why, you know, what fees they're actually capturing and how they're portraying it to the end user, to the customer. So it makes sense. That takes a lot of time. Overhead itself could be potentially solved with the cryptocurrencies, utilizing some sort of DApp or blockchain technology. And now one of the things what I noted down specifically was she's basically taking it from a first person perspective and her personal pain points. And of course, she actually adds a lot of notes of where she's getting that information and she's backing it up with evidence. But things like, for example, now if you're like me, you're probably unsettled by how much you're paying in fees watching the deduction of your paycheck or invoices. You could go on different forums and different platforms and talk to different people and draw out some anecdotal evidence, qualitative insight and bits and bobs, maybe quotes, which reinforces it so it's not just your statement adding a little bit more evidence to this could actually help you out because it's going to illustrate that pain point even further if she's listing it down below as well more of the issues and challenges you know you can always support it explaining about bitcoin ethereum how that started what sort of impact that had so it's almost like an introductionary case and i think if anything this is the ux ideation plus the intro for anyone who wants to get into the actual cryptocurrencies and how they could be utilized and what does that actually mean? So make sure to read this up, listing out exactly how does it work and how the Bitcoin, the flow supports itself and where does the actual fees come in. And for example, if you would now transfer anything or exchange from token to token, you still have to pay the fees, but you pay them in the actual decentralized tokens, which could vary, let's say. Let's say if you take Ethereum, which now has crazy type of payments and crazy fees. If you transfer something on a Sunday evening, the payment, the actual fee is going to be way less than, let's say, doing it like on a morning off, let's say Monday or so, where, when it gets very busy and so forth. So she's speculating around that as well. And then she outlines a lot of different issues about the time, let's say the fees, the processing, the, you know, lack of clarity, the learning curve, the trust itself, you know, all those different bits which make or break the experiences. Without it, you wouldn't have engagement or adoption of a fee. And then she jumps into the how my tweet, thinking about the Web3, the dApps, DeFi. She goes through all the different ideas of how it could be like. And the ideas here are really important. It's the exchanges, education, payment apps, wallets, tokens. She basically takes a lot of different bits around 
from Web3. And if we would employ multiple bits from that, we can actually make cohesive customer experience, which involves that. It's great. And then she prioritizes that using the Kano model and, and puts it up. What I would suggest Mayumi to do next is also think about displaying it visually. All those ideas about cohesive experience, for example, storyboard about the vision, how it could look like from the customer perspective could be really it. But this is great. One note, what I actually added additionally, this is the type of material and research which you could do as a UX designer or product designer or whoever you are, researcher, let's say, and put it in your portfolio alongside your work because it acts like a signal for hiring manager or whoever reviews your portfolio that, hey, you're interested in that, you know some stuff in that. So Mayumi, let's say, alongside her regular case studies could just now apply to something like Coinbase or some Binance or some other, you know, customer facing, let's say, crypto type of firm or agency or, you know, organization where they solve problems using decentralized technologies and blockchain. Pun intended, it's yet another token for you to actually get in because it's a signal that you know some stuff about it. And the second submission is by Callum and he's trying to redefine the future of self-employed and how we deal with taxes. He outlined a first-hand experience dealing with taxes, interviewed two people who are self-employed and UX designers too, I guess he's being very specific here, and then did some LinkedIn and Reddit background research. He immediately went to the User, which is great starting with like who is this for let's say or what issues they faced and what i've also found interesting was that he split it into primary and secondary users and focused a lot on primary users, which I'm going to get to in a minute, but trying to look at experiences for the future for self-employed, UX designers, government officials, clients, and tech. Interestingly, added jobs to be done of what exactly the, the actual UX designer who freelances would want to do, like communicate costs, always have taxes processed with no worries, I guess, spend less time, maintain real-time awareness, and then pain points, self-doubt and clear how to properly do taxes you know, don't we all? I would want to also know how did Callum arrived at that. So maybe adding sources or, you know, quotes again, measures, maybe stats of how many, who's facing that issue, you know, to what extent, what's the damage ultimately. That outline would be good intro, especially if this is taken into a case study, which I think you should, Callum. And then he went into how might we. So he took the pain points and then asked how might we solve that. And if I just take one example, for a time's sake. Hard to estimate pricing. How might we provide with accurate crunch specifics so that the users don't have to think about it twice. And then he went into ideas. Now here is what I would suggest to you, even if you used like a pseudo Kano model, is to make it more specific which ones are actually you're going to go for. So for example, if we look at the example from Mayumi, she's probably going to go for low hanging fruits and worth investments, but not so much the lower end. And I presume maybe you are a swell, but maybe it would be clear to just do that, you know, to market that way. But now the grand thing, and I think something which is super awesome here is the storyboard he produced. So as you can see, he calls this effortless decentralized taxes. One of the biggest headaches for any professional today is taxes. Do they pay enough taxes? Is it even worth it? How can I pay less tax? I guess all those questions a person might have. Now, next, he's saying people who would otherwise love to be self-employed don't commit to it. And those who do live in continuous uncertainty. I might as well just get the regular job. Meet Paul. Here's a twist. So he's using some storytelling here. Paul, a self-employed UX designer who freelances and sources all his payment and tax needs using the Paley app. Every time Paul engages with his client, Matt, he makes a service list that based on his hourly rates calculates the charge rate as well as the taxes Paul will have to pay in the end. There is an example, a bit of a potential UI, I guess, discovery, redesign, testing, handoff, total taxes sent to Matt. Meanwhile, Matt receives an outline and signs the contract that processes the initial deposit payment. And this is on Matt's end, I guess, as a client. And Paul doesn't need to worry how much of the income tax or how it should be processed. The seamless integration using the singular blockchain of record supplies information to all parties. So he's hinting at, again, using the blockchain and he's saying the different apps, this centralized apps could feed off of it. For example, government tax officials can view it on their end and process the taxes instantly without any delays. So I guess this is yet another app which states how much Paul has in live tax 
uh, how much he owes and when the actual government official also is able view on chain transactions and his clients also like the transparency of Paul services and costs which makes it easy to plan for it also makes Paul a go-to person for any UX related work because of such seamless integration Paul doesn't have to worry about anything else but doing his best UX work. Where is that mirror board? That's pretty cool. Now this could then, if enough prioritization, could feed into different projects, you know, and become a UX projects, so to speak. You know, that standard product design and some maybe user research outlines the future. And I think that then could give a good understanding for whoever a stakeholder is that's a good stab at it cool and this next case is actually done by multiple people the people who submitted this was au safira udipta uzair and job and i might be butchering someone's name and i'm definitely butchering one of your names at least and i don't know if i'm gonna be able to walk through this they could share a link down below so if anyone in that group wants to share it with you know with the public please do show exactly how you did it this case is really strong what i noted down for a live stream itself but this is super structured and well organized and let me actually demonstrate how transforming healthcare industry in treating alcohol use disorder aud with blockchain and ai and immediately you can see the table of content ultimately what impressed me a lot is the amount of effort and research we did so if i go to secondary research you're gonna see that there is a ton of information like the jargon buster and terms let's say defined the different differences you might think that you know enough about this issue people face in terms of addiction and other disorders but it's good to know exactly what does what mean especially if you don't have that in your life what we did is went out there and research a lot and as you can see using notion we basically outlined a lot of different bits which if i would be reviewing this as a case study i can just click on it and look exactly if i want to find out what does that really mean but going back to the actual case and the meat of it as you can see they start with a back Background, defining exactly what it is you can of course click through into that secondary research i already shown you they embed figma as well a lot of different data points structure triggers impact things of that nature what impressed me a lot about this case is that we divide it and conquer we have like a storyboard which is very visual boom they basically are introducing the team i liked this a lot actually because i think this is worth the blog post alone on their article about learnings ways of working what did they learn there is so much you could cover because this is a group project which emulates how you could potentially work as let's say imagine if you're agency or design thinking consultants or ux consultants coming in into a business with your team or joining a stranger's team and then coming up with solutions and of course we have some i saw conflict we had different ideas we have this different research bits which we tried to converge and combine and come up with some bits there is a lot of gold here and a lot of lessons for not just them but everyone else who would look into it so we did some secondary research we did online forum observations and what we did which surprised me was actually joining Australian Alcoholics Anonymous meeting on zoom and observing the conversations which is great it's one of those guerrilla methods to just you know choose yourself and do it and what i liked a lot about this is that we built the research as we went they had some stats we went into secondary research we went into online forum and said hey we need a bit deeper qualitative insights to actually back that data up or see if that matches up and if their hypotheses match up now what i would want them to do is clearly state what their hypothesis is and why they are doing this is how i read it but i want them to say this is my hypothesis therefore i'm doing this research therefore that and of course they're hinting at it but you could just state it this is the hypothesis basically they got a lot of different insights about it and you know the definition who's facing the problem what the problem is how does it affect them of course so much deliverables so they went into how might we ideated on a different solution came up with some ideas about the systems, variable designs, VR lobby. As you can see, we went crazy 
to a different extent and then kind of, I guess, pulled back to see exactly what's feasible and viable and appropriate, which is good. And I think the idea eight, which is going to segue next, is that personalized treatment plan. One thing what I took out of this is that, as you see on my screen, there is no standardized therapy. It has to work for people and grow with people and adapt with people. So we are hinting at machine learning and AI. And they came up with this flow slash storyboard, walks through a typical journey a lot of different parties could have. So I would call this almost like not an individual customer experience flow, but more of a, a service storyboard or service design storyboard. Whichever way you do, it's up to you how you present it, by the way. You know, you could use words, you could paint it, you could sketch it, you could do what uh, other submitters did. It's totally fine. It's up to you how you want to do it. This is what they chose to do because they have so many different segments interconnecting and basically feeding into experiences. But they're saying that it would start with medical consultation. It would go to medical assessments of other professionals. It would go into a data input so that the diagnostics and medical background could be sent into the system. Now, this is me being picky, but just to be very specific and feedback on this, I wonder if a data input should happen throughout it and it's not just one touch point after you're done because a lot of information might get lost and if it's not inputted immediately throughout those touch points is there paper involved you know that type of thing consider that as well it's tiny bit but something you might want to think and then the mechanism as well of how that sorts and matches to a specific diagnostic to relevant treatments and medications let's say it presents scoring some sort of so this is where a machine learning would come in medical practitioner would charge the reviews presents an execute treatment plan and then feedback. And then the behind the scenes, which is that service layer is really data in and data out, where you have the feedback working with medical history, medical research, scanning literatures, past experiences. So it becomes like a flow basically. And I guess feeding into the blockchain. Now, I'm going to be a devil's advocate, but I would ask immediately, does it really have to be blockchain? Because blockchain surely would support all of this through different methods like dApps and all the different bits and bobs using the web free layer. But does it really need to be? And I would say no. And sometimes in some projects, you might end up for research and ideation that you, you don't really need a mobile app. Again, you don't really need VR experience. You don't need, really need blockchain. And it's totally fine. This is how UX actually should work. You shouldn't limit yourself just with one specific technology. And granted, I asked you to think about it. But in real life, you sometimes, you know, your client comes to you and says, oh, I want this mobile app. And you do a research, you do discovery, you run workshops and you are kind of like, yeah, you, they, your users don't really need mobile app. They need something else. And I think it's totally fine to pull back because throughout this research, what the team did is really, really impressive. I mean, there's so much work in this and I feel like they should be quite, you know, honest and say, hey, I wouldn't think blockchain is the one or hey, blockchain is just one part of a solution because there's also machine learning and AI and the people's aspects, the process of people capturing that information through one-to-one -one interaction, the cognitive behavioral therapy, let's say, the CBT, uh, all the other methods, those are, could be also considered. So I wouldn't stop there. I would encourage the team to first and foremost, this is a really grand case study for your portfolios and everyone else submitted actually. Um, as a researcher, as a research part to UX, include it at the minimum as a, as a blog post. At the maximum, try to see if you can convert it into a case study as a research case study. It doesn't even have to go to design. If you wanna do design as well, it's such a deep research-based exercise that you shouldn't skip it or let it collect dust. Again, please, if you're feeling comfortable, share the links to these bits in the comments down below so people can see it and i'm really 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 happy to end this year on this note even if the live stream wasn't a success and for everyone else who couldn't make it pick it up anyways because the actual brief and the need in the market is going to persist you know the blockchain is going to stay and probably going to become even grander more mainstream and more needed for uxers to know it's a chance for you to enhance your portfolios and optimize your chances of getting into the actual industry like let's say web free or crypto or NFTs, or you name it. It's as simple as that. I hope you like this. Smash that like button, leave a comment down below. And on that note, and as per usual, I'll see you next time.